each roll of blinds. As you know, Hunter Douglas is all about having product that is unique to our, to our company and to our brand. Our edge roller blinds are a Hunter Douglas international design project. Now, this was based out of Bremerhaven in Germany, but we had a fair bit of input into the design and into the features that we wanted on this product. And it was important for us to have a product that was designed to feature simple installation, simple manufacture, and also simple packaging to get the product out to you in the best possible condition. So we developed chain drives with two different mechanisms to start. Those two different mechanisms are all about the chain drive ratio. There is a 175 to 1 ratio and a 1 to 1 chain drive ratio. In the domestic market, we've chosen to set the default at the 175 to 1. What that ratio means is you're going to pull the chain 1.75 metres to get one metre of movement out of the blind. That makes it a lighter, smoother operation, and it means we can go to larger blinds without the need to actually insert that spring booster, that spring assist. We do have the one-to-one -one chain drive ratio, and it's used predominantly in our commercial market more than anywhere else, but you can specify which one you want, although, as I said, we've made the default for the domestic market 175 to 1. Ball stops don't come on the 175 to 1, but you can request them if you want the one-to-one -one chain drive ratio. We also brought out a premium chain drive option. And some of you would have seen or heard about the premium chain drive. It is a bracket that we refer to it as a Zamac bracket. And it's actually a casting of five metals all together. Beautiful alloy finish. And being a fully metal chain drive, obviously it's quite weighty and it really looks the part when you marry it up with a metal or stainless steel chain. Now it is a one-to-one -one chain drive ratio only. Being all metal components, it handles that torque a lot better than the plastic components, so we haven't offered that in anything but one-to-one. -one. It's a great upsell, guys, and particularly when you're mounting your roller blinds out on face, it's a very nice bespoke look that can really add a bit of class to a, to a traditional roller blind. So chain drive obviously is the uh, probably the, one of the most popular operating systems for edge roller blinds. But late last year, we also introduced to you our light rise cordless operation for roller blinds. Light rise, as many as, as many of you would know, is that cordless, manually operated up and down function. You see it on duets, you see it on silhouettes, and you see it on some other product as well. We launched that for roller blinds. So it's a very light finely tuned spring in the roller tube and you move the blind to where you want it to be and it holds that position. So it's light rise, manually operated. Guys, like we always say, be conscious of being able to reach the top and the bottom of the blind just to ensure that it is the right or the most practical product to sell. But obviously, move that doesn't fall, child safety is paramount these days with blinds and with cords. So there's no issues there with child safety. So for kids' bedrooms and those areas, it's the perfect product to sell. I want to just talk through now all the features and all the options for roller blinds. Obviously, when you're doing a chain drive roller blind, it's imperative that you retain that looped chain. So we have a base fit chain tensioner and we have a reveal fit chain tensioner. Now, these obviously come with the blinds. We always supply all of the child safety components that you need with the blinds. And these are designed as a one-off use. So when they're initially installed and the chain is secured and the cover cap is clipped on, that's going to meet the child safety standards. But if that is removed for whatever reason, if the blind needs to be pulled down for cleaning, painting or for service, recommended that that part is replaced with a new one each time that blind is reinstalled. Measuring for edge, nice and simple. Zero, zero for reveal fit, and again, zero, zero for face. So you're not required to make any deductions on this product. We'll make some small deductions in our end. Keeping in mind, if you don't know, with the edge product, the idle pin gives us a lot of travel and will actually cater for any small errors that may be made whilst measuring. We have an idle pin that travels 14 millimeters. 
So obviously, when we supply the blind to you, based on the size you've given us, we're going to have it so that that pin is about halfway depressed, which still gives seven millimetres of leeway either side. So it really is great for areas that might be difficult to get to to, to measure. You can only measure up to a certain point. You know you've still got some flexibility in the movement of that idle pin. So measuring, obviously, zero deductions. Corners and bays, obviously refer to those measurements in your manual or in the, uh, in the pricing app as far as the placement in the windows to work out your, your through and your budding deductions. Obviously, roller blinds come in two aspects. Our standard roll, which for us is to have the fabric coming off the back of the roller tube closer to the glass. Keep in mind if you're doing that, if the backing on the fabric is a different colour, you'll see that different colour at the top of the roller tube. And in those circumstances, it may be more prudent to go with a reverse roll scenario. You need to tick that on your order form that you want reverse roll. That reverse roll creates a valance type effect. And certainly in corners and bays, it can really help reduce the cloth gaps where, um, with the blinds. So corners and bays, reverse rolling probably would be recommended as opposed to standard roll. The tube sizes. Edge blinds come in a 37mm tube and a 50mm tube. The 37mm is actually a standard 37mm and a heavy duty 37mm. Now we can go up to 2600 wide with this tube. Beyond that point, we go up to a 50 millimeter tube up to 3.3 meters wide. We've got some new power view motors, the battery motor, which slots nicely into the 37 mil tube. But when you go to hard wired motors, we're upgrading to the 50 mil tube and we have the adapters that will obviously accommodate the motors. So if you're doing a narrow blind, let's say below 2600, and you want to put a hard wired power view motor in it, for instance, you need to upgrade the tube, and there's a surcharge for that from the 37 to the 50 millimeter tube. Now we do have a bigger tube as well. We have a 65 mil tube for those bigger commercial jobs that are requiring much, much bigger drops. Now the bracketing options, Brackets come with the standard edge product in a 38 and a 55 millimetre projection. So we talk about, I guess, the standout or the projection of that bracket. So depending on the fabric and the drop and what that roll diameter ends up being on the actual roller tube, that will determine whether you need the 38 or the 55 millimetre brackets. You can specify in your order form which bracket you would like, and in most cases, the 38 mil bracket will be fine, but our configurator automatically will bump you up to the 55 millimeter bracket, if need be, to cater for that size blind that you've ordered. There's four component colors, black, gray, white, and magnolia. So you have those component colors in the brackets, you have those component colours in the actual chain drive mechanism and the other components that go into the shade. From a chain perspective, you have plastic, you have white, magnolia, and you have black, and then you have two metal chains, a uh, nickel plated steel chain, and then you have a stainless steel chain as well. One of the great things about the edge bracket and I'll probably mention this a couple of times throughout the presentation, is it's essentially the same bracket that we use right across the board. So it's universal. Left and right, universal bracket. The same bracket that you would use if you're doing a linked blind, the same bracket that you would use if it was in a head box, or even if you have the corner linking. So a nice, simple system where we're able to utilise a common bracket style across the whole range. We also have nice bracket covers. I mean, these brackets are nice and slim and quite streamlined. When you're fitting them on face, when you specify them, face fit on your order form, you'll receive nice colour-coordinated bracket covers as well. Now, obviously, there's dual bracket options as well, and this was something that we designed in Australia for our market because it wasn't a big demand overseas. So we've brought to you two dual brackets. We call them a dual reverse and a dual standard. 
the dual reverse bracket, which I'll just hold this bracket up and we've just drawn on a texture here. So the top roller blind, which sits slightly forward, is a reverse roll bracket. So that fabric comes around and comes down the front and it creates that sort of self helmet effect. This bracket's also fairly slimline in projection at 92 millimetres, so it really helps you get it into most reveals. So that blind there, the reverse roll, the bottom one can be standard or reverse roll, totally up to you. The standard dual bracket, both rolls are designed to roll standard roll off the back of the fabric, off the back of the roller tube. This does help pull the fabric back closer to the window, so again might be the best option in some scenarios. The bracket itself has a slightly bigger projection at 99 millimetres. Pretty sure we probably do about 90 to 95% of our dual brackets with that dual reverse bracket because we create the pelmet at the front. Same four colours. If you're fitting on face, you'll have a round cap, which is a bracket cover, which will go onto the end, again, just to dress that off and give it that nicer look. We also have links for edge as well. So obviously linking system is something that reduces the number of chains required to operate multiple blinds. And again, there's no special brackets required here. Our links work with our blinds through standard edge brackets. When we're linking, there's two different connectors. What we supply as standard is what we refer to as a straight connector. And it has three adjustment positions. And in many cases, that'll be fine. We've gone with this as our standard connector, mainly because we get a really nice small light gap. But there is another connector which we can supply you at no extra cost if you specify it when you order these, and it's called the aligner connector. Now this gives you a lot more incremental control over getting those blinds to line up nicely with each other. So I, I probably would suggest to you that the aligner connector is the better option, but just keep in mind, it's gonna increase your fabric gap by about four millimeters. Hence the reason we were asked to sort of go with the standard straight connector. But the aligner connector is there. As I said, it's no extra charge. You just need to ask for it when you're ordering. You can also do independently operated linked blinds. You can only do up to two, whereas with obviously normal linked blinds, we will link up to three linked blinds operating off one chain or one motor. And the independent link is essentially round, so it's not actually connected and locked in and driving either of the actual blinds, but it is just holding them in line. So you would have this in the center, a left-hand blind with a left-hand chain, a right-hand blind with a right-hand chain, and that would be your independent connector in the middle. Now, size limitations with linked blinds. Chain drive. We have a size limitation of nine square meters overall for those three combined blinds. When you motorize those, we can go up to 15 square meters for linked blinds. Corners and bays. Again, we can do linked blinds in corners and bays. And again, we use the same standard edge brackets that you know right across the range. So we have a 45 degree linking mechanism and we have a 90 degree linking mechanism. Obviously nice and simple operation through a series of universal joints. These come separate to the brackets and all the fittings are supplied and it's assembled on site. There are deductions in the book to work out obviously where you would measure the blinds to if you were using these connectors but talking to Trevor and, and whatnot we, we strongly recommend in this scenario that the ideal thing to do is go out and install the brackets first, install the connectors, make sure you've got them as nice and tight and operational as possible, then measure for the blinds. So install brackets and connectors first 
I know it means two trips to site, but you want to get that spot on. Then you're measuring bracket to bracket, and they're the sizes you give us when you order the blinds. I guess it's just a fail-safe way of getting it right first time. Now, other options with the product, with Edge, are obviously head box and side channel. And we are going to fit a couple of blinds here shortly, and one of those does have a head box on it. So head box, obviously great for the scenarios where you want to dress everything off and not see the roller. And then that can be coupled with side channel. So for scenarios where you've got a home theatre room, you've got bedrooms that people want to block out the maximum possible light because they're shift workers or they really need a dark room to sleep in, this is going to give you 99% light block out by putting it head box and side channel. You can just do the head box on its own, but if you do a head box only and then at some point down the track the consumer says, I would really like to get the side channel, we actually need to get the blind back because we need to trim some fabric off and cut the bottom rail back. So because we've got the channel, the fabric needs to be recessed in further to enable it to slide up and down that channel. So ideally, if you're going to order side channel, do it right from the beginning so that it's all configured correctly at our end in the factory. Now you call, can also just call up a fascia. So if people just want to, they've got the blind in reveal and they want to just dress the product off, reveal scenario is just to put a fascia along the top. Now the bracket that holds the fascia is, essential, is essentially just sections of head box that are just sliced into about 40 millimeter widths, they actually act as your bracket to actually hold on to the fascia at the top. And again, all these come in the same four standard colors. You have your black, your white, your magnolia, and your anodized silver. So you've got that consistency with colors right across the range. And the headbox is a nice compact size as well. Quite contemporary, nicely squared off, and it's an 84 millimeter projection. And again, this can be fitted on face, can be fitted in reveal. When we're fitting side channel in a reveal scenario, obviously we're just drilling through the side channel into our revealed timber or, or uh, architrave. If we're fitting on face, you're supplied little retainer clips, which would be fitted, I might, Trevor, sorry, come back over here, I'm moving around here. They're fitted in place. And that side channel comes along and clicks onto that little, that little device there. Now there's obviously different ways of fitting the product in different scenarios. Spoke about the idle end. As I said, we have 14 millimeters of play. So we've got some good sort of, you know, adjustment there for correcting any measuring errors that may have occurred. Standard idle pin is just a pin that's spring-loaded. We also have what's referred to as a locking wheel. Now, idle end with a locking wheel probably is ideal for large blinds, and it is supplied standard for linked blinds. Because what it does, you put that locking ring into position, and it will only allow that spring-loaded end to be depressed to a certain point. So in the case where you've got blinds linked together, Sometimes blinds can move in the middle. That locking ring will not allow that blind to move further than a certain point and will make sure that it can't fall out of the bracket. So linking blinds, you'll get the locking ring. You can ask for the locking ring if you want to use it on any standard blinds. It'll increase your fabric gap by a little bit as well. With our light rise roller blind, where we've got the very finely tuned light spring manual operation, great product. It's the same idle pin, but where the actual idle part fits into the bracket, there's actually a little, little ball bearing encased in that, just to give us that smoother operation for light rise, where we're trying to eliminate uh, all, the, all as much friction as possible. We also have a level of bracket. Now, sometimes you have a reveal fit, or even maybe a ceiling fit, and it's not level at the top and you may need to pack a bracket down, but well, you can actually call up a leveler bracket. Now this has some adjustments, so when you look at the idle pin, 
that fits in to that point there. You can actually move that up and down and you've got 14 millimeters of movement. So you've got some fairly good flexibility in the adjustment to actually get that in the position you need. And as I said, just saving packing or removing and re reinstalling some of the actual, um, some of the brackets. Obviously the edge system accommodates all the motorization options that you know, the merger, power view, and the Somfy, and obviously the Hunter Douglas motors as well. So we've got a range of different bracket adapters, all that work well with the edge system. Now I'm sure you will know this, but we've got 10 ellipse base rail colors that really blend in and really coordinate really well with all of the different color fabrics that we now have on offer. So a lot of new colors there. They all come standard with our integrated soundproofing bumper strip, which is still something that's very unique in the market. And it's a really good selling feature. It's worth pointing out to people every time. Show them the bumper strip designed to sort of eliminate any sort of bumping around or there's a bit of breeze coming through an open window. So that's what we like to put on all of our fabrics. You can call up a colonial plain pocket, which is a sewn formed pocket of fabric, and we will place in there a solid aluminium rectangular bar to give us the weight. And also there are some traditional scalloped trims still available in some of the select plain fabrics. So now what we're going to do is we're going to install a couple of blinds for you, just so you can see, as I mentioned to you, when the whole product was designed, it was all about simplicity of installation. Right across the component with edge, the colours are, you know, magnolia, white, black, um, and either grey or an anodised finish in the aluminium component. just want to show you this, guys. This is a little, call it a little roller blind. Um, we've designed this so that the chain drive detaches from the roller tube. So when we make the blind and we pack it and ship it to you, you know, when you've got obviously chain drives connected to the end of the shade, you have the possibility of the chain indenting the fabric. They're not very easy to wrap together with the chain drive on them. So it's detachable and you have fabric on a roller tube, obviously with the spring loaded pin. Good from an installation perspective as well. And we're going to go through that process now and put a blind up for you back here on our um, product installation house. So what we're going to do is we're going to fit a product in reveal here. I've already got the brackets installed. And I've chosen in this scenario to put one bracket as a face as a top fit. And then I'll put one on the side as a side fit. There's various bracket, various hole positions for you to fix your for you to put your fixings through. And it is important with a roller blind you get two fixings per bracket. Roller blinds can be fairly heavy product, and we'd always recommend two fixing points. So we've got that up there. So with my brackets in place, I'm actually going to come along with my chain drive. Now my chain drive has two lugs on it, and I might just grab a bracket. You can see on the bracket there's a whole series of lugs there. So I'm actually going to connect that to my bracket on the lugs and just push it down. Now if I want to release that chain drive from the bracket, and if I'm on a face, I can just come along and I can just push that tab there and it will release the bracket. Push that, push it up, and it comes off. If I'm in a reveal scenario, I can't get to the outside of the bracket. Just by simply lifting the center piece, I use a fingernail, I think we say use a screwdriver, but just with a fingernail, lifting that, and that can lift off. So you're basically pulling that spring button in and lifting the lugs off the bracket. So we're going to pop that in place, in there, straight on there like that. The next thing we can do before we even get to putting the blind up is install our child safety device. So the child safety device has a backing plate, and I should just nip that wheel off. So obviously you have a backing plate, a rubberized wheel to help deaden the sound, and then a cover cap. Now, again, these are items that you should put two fixing screws into. I am only putting one here today because, as I said, it's uh, not a normal scenario.
while Barry's doing that, I'll just reiterate on the child safety, you know, they must be secured. If the chain in this case, or but it's a cord, it applies to any corded product internally, uh, if that chain can create a loop greater than 220 millimetres at a height below 1600 from the floor level, then it must be secured. So the only other alternative is to have a very short chain and, and that is quite often a pain for the customers. So I've put the base plate on, I've clicked on the rubberized wheel, I've now got my chain, I'll just loop that chain around that rubberized wheel. You'll see here the warning swing tag is still there by the installer, I've got to leave that there. The legislation actually requires the consumer to leave it there as well, so it's important we don't remove that. So I've got the chain over the rubberized wheel and I'm now just come along, come along and click on my cover cap just to dress that off and pop that into position. So there you can see I've got my chain drive there ready to come along now and pop my blind in. So here I have my blind, blank at the end to connect to the chain drive and my idle pin at the other end. And it really is just a simple matter of lining up the two recessed notches on the chain drive head with the blind. Come along to the other end, and you can usually do this just by hand. Just press the pin, line it up, snaps into position. That roller blind is now completely installed. Pretty simple product. Obviously, you show the consumer how to operate the blind. And there you have it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to quickly put up another roller blind. We're going to put up an, another, obviously, edge roller blind. We're going to put up one in the head box. Now, when you receive, when you order and receive the head box, you'll find, obviously, the blind is going to come and it's going to be inserted into the head box and the brackets will be slid in to the head box in the position that they've been ordered and the brackets are held in position with little Allen key headed grub screws. So the bracket we use within the head box is a slightly different bracket to the standard brackets you use if you weren't using head box. Obviously the dimensions and the look is the same but they have the little grub screw there which obviously is designed to hold the bracket in the head box. It's still important though guys when you're attaching this um, edge roller blind in head box to fix through the bracket. Again roller blinds can be quite heavy the head box is fairly stable, but the recommendation is you fit through the brackets in the head box. I'm going to quickly pop this up. We've got existing fittings here that we use. Okay, head box up. I've already pre-installed my face fit chain tension here guys. I obviously have it up previously so I didn't remove it but obviously you'd attach the chain drive once you've got that in place. You'd actually put that there and you'd have it there and you'd mark the positioning of that and then you would fit some screws to fit it but I've already done that. So again I'm just going to attach my, um, my chain around my rubberized wheel. I'm going to clip on my dress cap so again, that's the sort of look that you have there with that. And the reason we say when you do replace these, please renew them with a new one, is that it's that end cap that clips or the cover cap that clips on and off. But the more often you take that off, the easier it will be to remove. So it needs to be a fairly secure fitting and meet the child safety standards, which it does from new. So then I've got my roller blind. So what I've got here, Obviously, if I'm going to use a side channel, I have to obviously do a standard roll. If you want to do a head box, you can do a head box reverse or standard roll. But if I'm going to have a side channel, you would obviously ensure that you ordered it as, or well, you could only order it as a standard roll. So again, I'm going to line up my notches on my tube with my chain drive head. And again, you can normally do this by hand and just depress that pin, slide it into the bracket till it finds its 
home in the center of that bracket. And I've now installed chain drive roller in there. And all I need to do now is come along with my head box and click it into position. Now you'll find with the edge head box now is that the end cover cap is a two part cover cap. The redesigning of this to two part really got it to sit nice and squarely and we don't have an issue with those end caps sort of sitting, uh, not actually sitting in place correctly. Nice and simple. Line that up. So I've got it around the wrong way, which doesn't help. No, out of the right way. Onto the top. Goes under a lip. Comes around. Obviously, we've got a cut out here for the chain drive. Make sure that we're lined up. Which we're not. That chain drive. There we go. When you get it in the right spot, it just almost falls into place. Obviously, I didn't have it in exactly the right spot. So there you have another chain drive in a head box. As I said, if I was putting side channel on it, side channels would be face fit coming down there nice and neatly. Bottom rail obviously comes down into that side channel as well. Any questions, comments, or anything that you'd like me to recap or answer for you? No? Guys, that's it. Gone through all the options and all the accessories and a few little selling features there with the Edge system. It is our Hunter Douglas system. It's got some great features. The whole simplicity of installation obviously is one of the uh, one of the big keys with the product. No deductions when you measure, makes it nice and easy. Great bottom rail options, great colours, great hardware colours and fabrics. That's the end of the session then guys. Thanks for your time.